What's up everybody? This is Coach Cody from the Athlete Academy here in Salisbury, Maryland, and I'm super excited to bring you guys our first video on our weekly whiteboard wisdom content series. This is going to be a super fun series for me. I love educating people, and what has inspired this is questions that we are asked on a regular basis. We're going to cover on our beautiful whiteboard here and help educate you guys. That way you know what exactly your athletes should be doing in order to improve their sports performance. And uh, so to get right into it, our first question that we're going to cover today is something that we're asked an awful lot by baseball, softball, and even some lacrosse parents. And that question is, should you apply resistance to sports-specific movements? And what that means is, you know, if I'm a baseball player, should I attach bands uh, and create that sports-specific movement, repeat that sports-specific movement in hopes to create a more powerful swing, more velocity on my swing, and things like that. And uh, before we get into answering that question, I think it's really important just for me to touch on and explain uh, what's kind of the, the staple of strength and conditioning and what all sports performance coaches should understand is the force velocity curve and the relationship with peak power. So peak power is going to be, you know, this uh, black squiggly line here and the peak's going to be at the top. So excuse me, power is going to be the whole black squiggly line, but the peak power is going to be at the top. That's what we're chasing. If we're training athletes in that peak power zone, we're creating a more powerful athlete, which is going to improve on the field performance. And uh, before we dive into that a little bit more, let, let's look at the graph a little bit. Over here on the left side, we have force. Over here at the bottom, we have our velocity. We have slow velocity, fast velocity. And uh, again, to make things simple, let's take a back squat. So if we do a one rep max back squat, which is going to be max force, that's going to be a weight that we can only do for one rep and then we fail we're going to be all the way down here on the slow side of that peak power. So we're not training to be more powerful, we're not training to be a better athlete, which is why you see a lot of uh, power lifters uh, where they're not the best athletes on the field. They can lift a lot of weight, but they're not very explosive. And again, that's not for all power lifters, but you know, that's typically what we see. And then on the other side of that, the inverse, if we have a very lightweight that we can move super fast, you know, that, that back squat, let's say 45 pounds, we can do, a lot of reps really fast. Well, we're super low on this power curve. Again, we're not training power and not getting more explosive. So we got to find out what that weight is in a back squat that's going to put us at that peak power position to help us actually train power and to be better on the field. Um, again, very, it's way more complex than that. You know, simplistically put, simplistically put uh, I think that's simple enough. But uh, let's dive back into the question. And, you know, again, the question, revisit. Should you apply resistance to a sport specific movement? <clears throat> there are a few ways you can go with it. I don't think there's ever a bad exercise. I think there's just poor timing of exercises. And research is gonna show, again, everything we talked about is gonna be research back. Uh, research shows that your typical high school and collegiate level athlete, and in specific, we, we read articles on baseball players because there's more studies on baseball players and softball players, but your typical high school and collegiate level baseball player did not show improvements in, a res in resisting that sport specific movement, whether it's throwing or hitting. In fact, research actually shows that a high school or collegiate level athlete who is interested or who, who does this resistant training actually has an increased percentage of 40% to get injured. Uh, so they're 40% more likely than an athlete that is not inside that training program to get hurt. And you know, you want to ask, you know, why is that? Well, it's, it's super simple. Your typical high school and collegiate level athlete does not have a strong foundation. They do not have a strong strength and conditioning background. Your professional level athletes can get away with training like this, but realize this is not the majority of their training. This is a super small slice of that pie that they're doing. Um, but they have a very, so a very strong strength and conditioning base. So... As again, as a high school and collegiate level athlete, not the best idea if you're looking to stay injury free, as research is gonna show it's going to increase your injury by 40%. Um, so kind of getting into it again, uh, I didn't sit here and say, you know, you should never do it. I do think there's a time. Uh, and let's dig a little bit deeper. So the idea of resisting that bat swing is, what we're doing is we're resisting the concentric movement of our body. And what the, the concentric is, you know, when we contract our muscles to generate force, which we're going to then put into the bat and then put into the ball and hopefully, you know, send for a home run or the other side of it, you know, take from our arm, put into the ball and then throw harder, right? So theoretically, if we resist that concentric movement, we're going to become more powerful. The big issues with bands is that 
we don't know where we're at on this power curve. We don't know where we're at on the force velocity curve. You know, when we start off with the band, when we're here with the bat and haven't created the movement, there's not any band tension at all, or maybe very little. So we're over here on this side of the power curve. And then when we start to swing, you know, we start to travel this way and maybe we hit peak power for, you know, a millisecond. But when we finish that movement and that band's in full resistant tension, we're over here on this side creating a slow movement. So we could in fact making, we could be making our swing actually a lot slower. Again, diving back into the research a little bit, there was a study where you know, everybody sees the baseball players who put the donuts on the bat and they create the swings. Uh, well, they did a study of what, what the optimal weight was to actually improve the swing. And they found that whatever the bat weight that athlete plays at typically is gonna be their most powerful. Um, let's just assume it is. Plus or minus 12% of that bat weight is going to put us in that peak power area right around here and actually help to improve our bat speed. So let's take that same three over to a resistant band training. We need about plus or minus 12% of our peak power. We gotta maintain that position to improve speed. Again, accommodating resistance for a band, no resistance at all as we perform that swing, more resistance, more resistance, and then a lot of resistance at the end. We're way outside of that plus or minus 12%. It's a very small margin. And last but not least, I'm just going to kind of leave you guys on this one. Uh, something that, we've, that, that research has found in their most explosive throwers. Again, this was a baseball and softball study. In fact, your athletes, for increased velocity, for, for optimal velocity, your athletes are typically have greater strength. They're going to have greater power and leaner body masses. So your lean athlete that's strong and powerful is obviously going to be your most explosive athlete on the field. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be our first video for our weekly whiteboard wisdom content. Uh, to summarize it real quick, if you're a high school athlete, if you're a college athlete, if you're a high school or college coach, and you're performing resistance band training on your athletes, I highly encourage you to second guess it as I don't want to see them get hurt. You don't want to see them get hurt. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. We'll gladly talk to you guys about it. We'll talk to your athletes, your program director, whoever it may be. We want to empower our athletes, our parents, and coaches to make the best decisions for their career. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.